I'm Steve for This Book With Cars and today I'm back with my electric car from the 1980s. The car has been running very reliably now and up until this point I've been concentrating on the high voltage electrical system. So today I'd like to take a look at the low voltage electrical system and do some upgrades to it. Under the hood of the Electra we see all conventional lead acid batteries. All 19 batteries in this car are the lead acid type which are heavy and also do not contain a lot of energy for how big they are. A few months ago I got this Roy Powell lithium battery. If you didn't see my video on that click on the link up here. This battery has some strange characteristics. It cannot provide a large amount of current so you can't use this as the starting battery of a normal car. But I can use this as my normal 12 volt battery for this car. The first of all of these lead acid batteries that I'm going to convert to lithium is going to be this little one right here that provides the power for the lights, the radio, activates the solenoid that turns on the electrical part of the car. And it also turns on this 128 volt to 12 volt converter which charges this battery over here. So the only major function that I need this battery to do is to activate the solenoid turning on the rest of the car and the converter can power everything from then. This battery is very lightweight, so it will save me a little bit of weight over this one single battery. And if I were to convert all the rest of these batteries to lithium, it would be a huge weight savings in this car. Let's get this battery out and see how much weight savings I have just by swapping out this one battery. And I'm hoping that the size of this battery will actually work better in the stock location than the one that I was using. Let's put the lead acid battery on the scale. That comes out to 16 pounds. We'll set the lithium battery on. That one, nine pounds. I'm not saving a lot of weight with this one battery, but remember there's 19 batteries in this car and the other batteries are about four times the size of this one. So if I were to convert the whole car to lithium, not only would I have more power, I would have a lot more weight. And an added bonus of these batteries is that I'm not going to get battery acid leaking. That's going to corrode the car and all the battery frames. This battery also charges a lot quicker than this one does. Fortunately, height-wise, I think this battery is better, but it is just slightly, just the slightest amount wider than the other battery. So I'll have to reconfigure the battery tray in order to get this to slide down into it. This battery was actually slightly bigger in both dimensions, but with a little bit of modification, I got it to fit into the original bracket. Everything is hooked up again. Let's just turn the car on, make sure that everything works before we go to the next step. When we turn the key, the only indication that the car is on, we'll hear that click. We make sure it's in neutral. You heard the electric motor spin there. So now parts of this car are officially powered by lithium batteries. One of the most important things on an electric car is efficiency. And that's why I bought some LED lights from vintagecarleds.com. And these look like actual vintage lights. And that's because they actually use real housings and then mount LEDs into them. Many of my cars are using the lights from vintagecarleds.com. If you want to see what one of these looks like in an MGTD, click the link above. And Vintage LEDs was nice enough to give me a discount code for you guys. So if you want 10% off these LED headlights, use the code this week with cars when you check out. These particular lights are the model VCM3, and I get this model with the round lights as well. They're my favorite. And one of the reasons I get this particular model is because there's nothing sticking out the back. This is very similar to the way the regular headlight is. You don't have a pigtail with another connector coming off the back of the light. And that's why I use the VCM3s. The headlights on the car are one of the biggest draws of power, so they're really good in an old car that uses a generator, and obviously in an electric car. They should draw a lot less power, but let's not take their word for it. Let's test it first. I have my ammeter connected. 
Let's turn the headlights on and this will show us how much power the headlights are drawing. The stock headlights are now on. And they're taking 14 amps of power. So let's put the LEDs in and find out how much power those take. Have the first headlight out and I believe this is actually an original NOS headlight. I did replace this entire bucket with an NOS one. This is the light that came with it. So I think this is the original equipment light. You can see on the back, there's the connector right there. And that's why I like this model of the LED because the connector is right there on the back. You don't have a pigtail sticking out. Both new lights are in now. I think they look pretty good. Let's see if they take less power. You can already tell from here that that light is a lot brighter than the old lamps. And now we're only drawing seven amps. We've just seen that converting to LEDs is a great thing because they take a lot less power. The problem I have with most LED headlights is they look like this. This is one from truck light. These are great for a military vehicle like this, but they don't look anything like a classic headlight. And I think cars look really, really strange, especially vintage cars with a light like this. And that's why I like the headlights from vintage car LEDs. Here's ones on my Toyota Land Cruiser. These look great on this vehicle, but they might not look the best on a vintage car. And that's because they are kind of flat. However, vintage car LEDs has this model, which is the classic lens. And as you can see, it's a lot more bulged out. And this looks really good on cars from the 50s. And like I said earlier, I always get these without the pigtail or a fan, anything that's going to add extra depth to the light. That way you know for sure that these are going to fit in the original application. They even have a Hella version for your German vehicles. I started to make a video about these lights using my Pinsgauer months ago, but that video never panned out. So right now I have the headlight switch on. And if I connect up this regular light bulb, this is an incandescent light bulb, we'll see that it does light up. But if you have a Porsche or Volkswagen, Mercedes, some other vintage German vehicle, these Hellas look perfect. Here's a set that I have installed on my Sunbeam Alpine. And I use this particularly on this car because I drive this car more as a daily driver. I also don't have a battery in this car. I'm using an ultra capacitor and the car only has a generator. So I want these lights to be bright, but use as little power as possible. I've been using these headlights from vintage car LEDs for years. This is the first time that I've used the square configuration. I bought this extra set so that I can put it on my bus. And if you want to buy a set for your car, use the code this week with cars when you check out to save an extra 10%. In the Pinsgauer video that I never got around to finishing, what I was going to demonstrate is that the LEDs are polarity sensitive. So you have to make sure that the powers and grounds are going to the correct terminal for the LED to work. It doesn't matter on an incandescent bulb. You could have switched your car from positive and negative ground and the incandescent bulb is still going to work properly. But if you're going to put an LED into a car that's been converted, you do have to make sure that your polarities are correct. LED stands for light emitting diode and diodes are a one way electrical device. So just keep that in mind. If you install one of these and it doesn't work at first, check the polarity on your pins. That's going to be it for today on the Electra. I'm glad that for once I wasn't having to fix things with the drive system. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.